Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesse Warden. Today we're going to talk about game loops in gaming. Not really going to talk about game loops and apps because they're not really useful there. So what is a game loop? A game loop is something that's opposed to an event-based architecture. It's really just something that goes, yo dude, yo dude, yo dude, yo dude. What does that mean? It's a loop. It could be something that runs every second. It could be something that runs every few milliseconds. But it's really something that allows your game and a variety of participants in your game to respond to things that happen over time. It allows multiple NPCs or non-player characters to actually think, to have a moment of time from when they know when something started versus when they ended. It allows you to transition from screen to screen. If you're gonna wait for a certain time period to go from here or next, you could build your own event system where you actually trigger an event and wait for the game loop to process it, right? It's an efficient way of doing things. Nowadays, they have event-based systems and GUI systems. You don't always have to wait. And there's a fine line between what do you let the game loop handle versus what do you let GUI handle. But we'll talk about that. The main reason for people using game loops is for performance, specifically on a variety of hardware devices. Nowadays, uh, games, it tends to get a little more you know, play and importance because we have really old phones that you run, you know, Android 2.2 to new phones that run like iPhone 5 and, you know, the latest iOS and they're really fast. And you want your game, whether it's a strategy game or a uh, multiplayer, you know, plane shooting game or whatever, you want the same frame rate or at least the same actions to occur. A good example is there was um, a mech game back in God, a long time before I was born that allowed you to play on like, I think it was a Pentium 1 or something, or Pentium 286. Anyway, when the processors doubled, the speed of the game was doubled. It was unplayable. They actually coded it to the speed of the CPU. So what happened was when you upgraded the game, the, the game was twice as fast, right? So rather than taking advantage of the new power, maybe, you know, giving better frame rate, refresh more, better graphics, they, they didn't know what to do with this these time slices of CPU. So what you can do is actually utilize that and say, look, I have, it's been uh, you know a second before I've repainted the screen. Uh, what's occurred that I can do? Well, your ships move from here to here, so you might want to paint them here. Versus it's been 100 milliseconds. Oh, in that case, just paint them here, right? So you get that opportunity to, to handle those updates based on how much time has passed since the last tick, whether that's in milliseconds or seconds, so you can draw how fast it goes. And if it takes a second for your ship to go from here to here, it's going to take one second regardless of what device it's on because the game loop handles that, right? The game loop is really good at determining how much time has passed since the last tick, right? And again, this gives you the option to handle everything from the logic, from the repainting or blah, 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 right? So again, to summarize all that insane tech Bible is a game loop allows for efficient rendering and accurate timing regardless of the speed of the device. You got it? Cool. Okay, so that's one. Number two is it also allows the accurate timing for like what happened. So if you have characters that need to do certain things over certain times, so like for example, one way I compensate in Box 2D for jumps is I allow the game loop to give me about a half a second of jumping, like jump, and then after that it can start detecting collisions on the way down, right? I don't really care about the on jump because Box 2D is pretty good about that, but I don't want to take a, a landing, right? You're not going to jump up onto a ledge. I have specific code for that. So there's a variety of other ways that you can use a game loop for accurate timing. You also factor your game loops into the actual movement speed, and I'll show you that in a minute. What that allows you to do is accurately how much time has passed, so how fast you have to move. This allows for the most smoothest rendering or fastest redraw or highest frame rate that you can possibly get versus using what Flash, Corona, Gideros, Moi, Unity, all use for something in terms of frame rate, right? Frame rate is a little different. So the way most things work, and I'll show you an example of this, most runtimes use something called the Elastic ra Racetrack. So let's go Elastic Racetrack. Now this was popularized in, in uh, Flash, but um, we're not really interested in that. What we're interested in is how it works, right? Most runtimes, what they utilize is something called a thread. A thread is really just uh, a mode of operation for a computer to handle stuff that it needs to process. So for example, your code, and actually drawing the screen happen on the same thread or the same cycle. So if you want to, let's say, move something and you want it to refresh 30 frames a second, right? If it's gonna do 30 frames a second, that means, okay, so in one second, 
it has to you know move your move your object right well if it's running at 30 frames per second that means 30 times a second it has to repaint the screen what if when it's repainting each each you know iteration that frame also has to have a big chunk of lua code or c sharp code in unity or whatever right or action ship 3 code if it's got to run that it's got a split time for both painting the screen and running all your code and doing both of those things, you know, because sometimes when you change code, like you move an object, it's got to repaint it one one place over. If you've got to do all that in one second, well, the CPU's got to do both, right? So sometimes your code will go so slow, it'll just say, well, I don't, I don't really have time to repaint the screen. That's why you drop frame rates when things get too fast, right? So good game developers who are epic, they actually do their GUI on a separate thread, so the code doesn't actually interrupt it. Now, things like uh, Action Shift 3 have kind of like threads, but they're a little too late. Uh, Unity has stuff like that too, but the, the Lua doesn't really have that. It's like coroutines. JavaScript for HTML5 has something like web workers, which are a little more efficient and work pretty well. cross platform is a little strange, but you can do that, but it makes your code more complex. Most people don't do that. Most people use a game loop, right? So it helps to see this visual to understand that your code and the actual painting of the screen happens on the same frame. So if you have code that's very inefficient, you're not, you might not get all 30 of those frames to paint. Now, most games try to do 60 frames per second or higher to uh, you know, use the optimized refresh rates of the monitors that you're running on, right? Not gonna work if you know, your code's not doing that or you're using something like, I don't know, high level language, right? So that's what game loops help you do. They help compensate for the elastic range track, right? They help, it, like if we're not gonna do a render, let's make it as accurate as possible. Additionally, our code execution, we wanna make sure that it's time specific, right? So frames are, in most languages, are rendered or, um, round it out pretty well to give you accurate timing. So you're not guaranteed like 30 frames per second sometimes because the device just won't run that fast. Uh, maybe you've got too many objects on the screen or whatever else. But you can generally use interframe or everything else for timing, but it's better to do the systems timer and to make your own kind of interframe if you're familiar with that, to actually use those time slices to draw, okay? So that's, that's what, when, when we say the elastic racetrack, it's not Flash Player specific, okay? It's HTML, like if you look at underscore, for example, for HTML5, um, underscore has something, I think it's like, it's not set interval, it's like delay, I think. All it does is wait for the current call stack to, to execute and basically sets an interval for like a zero or one or 100 milliseconds and starts another stack, right? That means after another frame has happened. Flash is notorious for doing that for invalidate or stage.invalidate or event.render or you know, draw now or whatever framework, component framework you're using, right? They actually wait a frame for it to redraw before they redraw again, right? So they're trying to maximize and reduce the amount of rendering calls. It gets really complicated really quick, but you don't need to worry about that. All you need to know is a game loop is um, really good for optimized rendering and, and handling and compensating for this kind of sharing of rendering and code on the same frame, right? So that's another. That's number two. That's what a game loop is also good for. The third thing, how do I pause my game? You stop the game loop, <laughs> right? If you have a single game loop, everybody participates and thinks on, a, on whenever they're delegated a tick. If there's no ticks, they ain't doing nothing. Now the obvious caveat for that is GUI controls. Some GUI controls don't need a game tick to respond to touch events, to tap events, uh, click events, whatever, right? But for the most part, actual game specific code you know, you can only bring up certain buttons on a pause screen that you want the user interacting with, such as unpause or settings, things that don't really affect gameplay, right? Like not the fire button. So they don't click the fire button 50 times or whatever. And then when the game starts, they have 900 bullets, right? So that's that's the third thing that game loops are good for is if you build everything around this game loop, pause in the game is really simple. Now, again, most of you are like, why don't I just use, you know, inner frame that comes with um, the versions. There's actually a request animation frame in Chrome now, which actually is its own little game loop kind of uh, boilerplate code. There's a lot of HTML5 frameworks that have it as well, and Flash and, and others and Corona have Interframe. So why don't you use that? Well, the problem is again they don't guarantee you how much time has passed. They just give you as many frames as they can possibly handle. So if they can only draw five frames, tough, right? It's up to you to make more efficient rendering, and you can do that with a game loop. You can actually generate it. And since they have sub-pixel rendering, you're good to go. Okay. So that's the three main important things. Again, efficient rendering, cross device, cross platform and cross desktop, whatever. Um, it also allows you to manage effectively the sharing of uh, code processing and drawing to the screen in the same thread, right? Since uh, even if you code teams, whatever else, blah, blah, blah. And number three, it's easy to pause the game.
Okay, so that's the three main reasons why you use a game loop. And again, most of these have nothing to do with application development. That's why in apps, you don't really see this for like apps, like uh, clicking buttons and building forms, because no one wants to pause building the forms. Like if you're not, you know, doing anything with the form, the form isn't doing anything, right? Once you start typing, it'll go, oh, I need to, you know, do a, a quick type to search with their type of form. Maybe they're searching, I want to show them some options. Or they click submit, I want to go submit the form. It's usually reactionary. It's not like a game which ha constantly has things. Enemies will attack you even if you do nothing, right? So a game is a little different. That's why it's um, a little more brought up a lot in the context of gaming, okay? So let's show some code of a basic game loop. Now we're gonna go to GitHub. Um, I'll, I've got versions of this code in just about every project I've done. But if you go to, uh, so Dana Maestro is a good one. Go to code, go to utils. It's, I think it's utils, yeah, uh, game loop. All this does, and I mean, you can, I've, I've actually borrowed this, I think, from somebody else's. They wrote it in AS3 or C Sharp or something. Um, all this does is take the time of whatever the system is, right? So get timer. Just about every language has some form of get timer. It gets in milliseconds right now. And when you call get timer again, it gives you how much milliseconds have passed since you last called it. When you first call it, it's how many seconds have passed since the app has started. App, web page, whatever, right? So you can use that to accurately determine within milliseconds, right, of how much time has passed. Other languages support a little longer milliseconds, like nanoseconds or whatever past that. I think, you know, 64-bit, blah, blah, blah. But milliseconds is usually good enough, okay? So all it does is, is compute the difference. What's How much time has really passed? Anybody who participates has said, hey, here's how much time has passed. This inner frame or, you know, fires as many times as possible or every redraw cycle. Now that's what I chose to do because most people participating in the game loop care about I am running at a potential redraw cycle. What can I draw now compared to what I drew last frame that has changed? Now usually using frames, you don't get how much time has passed between frames. Now you do. Right, that's what the game loop provides. What is the difference? How much? How much is time versus just, hey, it's a new frame, inner frame, time to draw. Right, it's just an enhancement on that. Additionally, you can pause it. So if you pause the game loop and everybody's participating in the game loop, the game pauses. Right. Uh, you can also start it again. So if it's paused, it'll restart the whole thing, and you can respond to it and blah blah blah. So that's a game loop. Okay. So let's show you the sucker in action. So you're like. All right, what is this redraw stuff you're talking about? I will show you. You know what, I'm gonna open up the uh, robot legs example. And the reason I'm gonna do that is that it has a wonderful, speaking of robot legs, see my shirt? That's right, it was a project on GitHub uh, for ActionShip 3 and I ported it over Corona like two years ago and just, you know, this last game, one game a month for March, March, April, uh, I was doing an app for a change, and I was using gamification to gamify it. I know everyone hates that word. I get it. But anyway, I was trying to gamify it, and I needed a framework. And I, you know, it's been a couple years. I've messing with Corona. I've learned. So I tried to simplify it, and uh, I updated on GitHub. So if you're doing apps in Corona, you should definitely check it out. For gaming, it's not really that helpful. But it does have a game loop example in it. So let's look at main of this guy. You'll notice... If I run it, check this out. So you can see this plane follows wherever my mouse goes, okay? So I'll move it around, whatever, and it goes there, okay? Now let's look at the algorithm that does that. So I've used a basic game loop here, very similar, right? Remove from loop. It's basically before I actually convert it into a class because most people in Lua and Python are, you know, not Python, that's rude. Uh, most people in Lua. And even JavaScript are like classes. I mean, you can do that, but why would you want these classes? Like, you know, we're functional. We're so much better. You don't need classes. Classes are for oop Java crazy people. Um, so let me show you how this works. If I touch the screen, I give the plane a target. Basically, where did I last touch or tap the screen? Okay. And the plane, and I'll show you what player is. The player using this target knows where to go based on the image tick. Now here is the kicker here. I wanna show you something. Right now I'm not using mel seconds past, okay? And this is important. If you look at the config, which there is none, so let's make one. All right, set this sucker to 30 frames a second, okay? And there it is, good, reload. Okay, 
Whoa, too big, Jesse. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow your roll. All right, well, completely messed up the viewport, but whatever. So see how it goes at 30 frames per second? Okay, now let's change it to 60. See how it's much smoother and much faster, right? I've doubled the frame rate, thus I've doubled the speed. That is not what we want. We don't want you to go there faster strictly because we've doubled the frame rate or the device we're running on is an iPad 2 versus an iPad 1. That wasn't what we were going for here, right? And this is a common problem. So again, if I set it 30, just in case you didn't see it, I click, it takes about 1,000, 1,000 to get up there, okay? But if I set it to 60, 1, 1,000, half the speed, right? Not good. You want time-based animation, right? This is why tweens and tween light and G-tween and all these other tweening engines on the WizEb, jQuery, blah, 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 use time-based ticks. And why browser vendors such as Chrome are uh, exposing um, request animation ticks and all these other more efficient ways to, to emulate game loops, right? To emulate time-based redraw, to allow you to redraw as fast as possible, regardless of what device you're running on. Your code can run the same, right? So let's go to player and we're gonna add some, some time here, okay? So we have a speed up here. The speed variable, six pixels per second. Well, as we know, that's not really accurate, right? It's not coded specifically. So let's modify this algorithm to take into account, okay, how many milliseconds have actually passed since my last redraw? So instead of inner frame, it's last tick, okay? We use the word tick. You, some people use the word think, right? And that's fine too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this um, algorithm and modify it. And the one thing we have to do is change the speed. It's no longer a pixel to time ratio. It's actually a float. So we'll do something a little lower around 15, okay? Because we're dealing with sub pixel time increments. It's another fancy way to sound smart in front of your parents or SO. Significant other. She's so hot. So you could take um, your speed and multiply it by how much time. Now what does that mean? Well, this is a ghetto way of saying, look, the more time that's passed, the farther I need to go. How much time is passed is directly or proportional to how far I need to travel based on my current speed. You got it? So that means the slower the device, I need to redraw from here to here. Faster device, I need to redraw here and here and here and here. Make sense? All right, check it out. So here's what happens when we change it to a time-based mechanism. One, two, three. Okay. Change it to 30. One, two, three. All right, not so bad, right? I'll, see, I'll show it again at 30 frames per second so you can see it. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. Change it to 60, twice the speed. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, right? But it's more smooth, smooth animation, right? So that's an example of using your game loop to have more efficient animation, regardless of what device this will run on, whether it's a iPhone 5, Strike Gun Tour, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. See, doesn't matter. Like the, the Chemical Brothers song, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, right? Good stuff. Oh God, Android, blah. Sorry, Mac, sorry I did that to you. All right, but you get the points, right? So that's that. Additionally, we can stop the plane by creating a pause button as well. Let's do that. We'll go down here and you know what? Let's do two things. Let's slow the plane down a bit so we have a chance to actually click our button. Change it to zero seven. We'll halve, 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 halve the speed from the south. We have problems with drawing on A, A, L, V, E's. Halve, halve the speed. See, it's so much easier to say that. Half the speed, man, it's half, half as fast. Forward, first on race day. Uh, where was I? <laughs> Sorry. All right, we're gonna make a button. So let's do, call it pause button. Pause. And put it 200. Pause game. Whoa, hello. Q. 
Okay, and here's what we're going to do on pause game. We are going to pause our game loop, which may be impossible given that this is ghetto code. We will find a way. Where's my inner frame? There she blows. Nothing's impossible. It's just how much money you're willing to spend, how much time you're willing to take, and how much Red Bull you're willing to drink, or coffee, or tea. All right, so we're going to make this plane travel up here, and we're going to pause the game loop. Stop. Hematom. Oh, game loop, game loop. Right, makes sense? So we can also unpause the game on unpause. Unpause. Latin is a strange language. All right, runtime, add, and we'll make a copy pasta because copy pasta coding is super hot, super fly. And we'll go, our left is what, 200? Unpause button. On unpause. On. It's like you in pause. Ready, go. Pause. And then keep going. Now that you see what happened? Do you see what happened? It teleported. Why did it teleport? Because a lot of time has passed and your code wants to compensate. Like, look, you know, over seconds passed. We're actually supposed to be here. Right? So I'll show you that again if you missed it. Okay? Pause. 1,000, 2,000, 300,000. Teleport. <laughs> so. For animation, you'll see a lot of times what they'll do is they'll say, and I'll show you an example of where I actually fix this comp um, for a lot of game loops, is they'll actually assume that, okay, if you know a certain amount of time's passed or you run on a slow device, you got a lot of enemies on the screen, whatever, you know, maybe you have some performance problems. We will basically assume, and I'll show you, this is in the plane cheater code base, which is also on GitHub. We'll assume, hey, we're already there. Just go ahead and move there. No need to teleport or wiggle, right? Just get there, okay? For NPCs, it's a little bit bigger deal. So for example, if you're playing an RPG and some time has passed, and they might have three actions they might have had to, had to do before that. So a lot of times they'll put it in a queuing system. So just something to be aware of if you're using this for something other than animation, such as thinking, right? So that is a game loop in a nutshell. You can see how it pauses, unpauses. You can see how it compensates for device speed. And it allows for more efficient redraw across devices and allows you to pause your game, right? Makes sense? So that is, again, so to summarize, game loops are traditionally used in games, not applications. Game loops are really good for compensating for device variety of device speeds. They also give the smoothest runtime uh, animation possible, regardless of what frame rate you're actually running at. They allow you to pause um, your, your game so you can actually you know, stop everyone from thinking, right? And actually go. And if everyone participates in it, then you can globally stop everything. So that's game loops in a nutshell. If you got any questions, hit me up. I'm Jesse at jessewarden.com. You can hit me up on Twitter. I'm on Google Plus. I'm on Facebook sometimes. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, all this code is up on GitHub. So you can check it out. And thanks for your time.